was both a productive and an intense meeting. Uh, productive meeting on the government shutdown. Um, we, we are making good progress. Uh, we made it very clear that the speaker said unequivocally he wants to avoid a government shutdown. Uh, we made it clear that that means not letting any of the government uh, uh, appropriations bills lapse, which means you need some CRs to get that done. But we're making good progress, and we're hopeful we can get this done really quickly. Um, there are a little back and forth, some different issues that different people want, but I don't think those are insurmountable. The fact that so clear that we can't have the shutdown because it hurts so many people in so many different ways, even for a short period of time, it was very apparent in the room, and the speaker did not reject that. He said he wants to avoid a government shutdown, so that was very hard. The meeting on um, Ukraine was one of the most intense I have ever encountered in my many meetings in the Oval Office. The four of us all together led, the first person to speak was Leader McConnell, the five of us, the President, the Vice President, Leader McConnell, Speaker, uh, Leader Jeffries, and myself, made it so clear how vital this was to the United States. This was so, so important. And that we couldn't afford to wait a month or two months or three months because we would, we would in all likelihood, would lose the war. NATO would be fractured at best, allies would turn away from the United States, and the boldest leaders, the boldest autocrats of the world, the Putins, the Xi's, presidents of North Korea, North Korea, I like the governor of North Carolina, <laughs> uh, the presidents of uh, North Korea and Iran would be emboldened, thinking that the United States was this soft, fat, a country that lost its way and would take advantage. And so we said to the speaker, get it done. I told him, this is one of the moments, I said, I've been around here a long time, it's maybe four or five times that history is looking over your shoulder. And if you don't do the right thing, whatever the immediate politics are, you will regret it. I told him two years from now and every year after that, because really it's in his hands in his hands. We told him how important it was. It was passionate. I talked about my trip to Ukraine where I just met soldiers who had Russian artillery in range with the drones they have, but had no ammunition to fire at. We talked about four brigades who were ready to go, Ukrainian, no arms, and how serious the lack of arms commitment was. And it was the consensus in that room, Zelensky and Ukraine will lose the war if we don't get the arms and don't get them quickly. The speaker brought up the border. We made it very clear to him that we want to do something real on border. And in fact, we Democrats in the Senate supported a border bill that very conservative groups, including the Border Patrol agents, the Wall Street Journal editorial page, and uh, Chamber of Commerce were for, but said to hold up Ukraine, which is he admitted was a national imperative, because you can't do something else which we all should work on, was a non sequitur. There was no logic. There's a logic to solving the water. We want to solve it, but we have to. But we have to do Ukraine right now because there's an await that can get done quickly because that has broad bipartisan consensus the border take some more work, which we'll be happy to work on to get it done, but not hold up the Ukraine bill for it. Senator Schumer, Senator, Senator Schumer. Let me first just uh, thank President Biden for convening us for this very important discussion to address the important challenges that are confronting the American people. Uh, it was an intense meeting, it was an honest meeting, and ultimately it was a productive meeting. We discussed three issues. First, the need to avoid a government shutdown and to fund the government so that we can address the needs of the American people in terms of their health, their safety, and their economic well-being. We are making real progress. 
on the appropriations bills that are scheduled to lapse on March 1st. And I'm cautiously optimistic uh, that we can do what is necessary within the next day or so to close down these bills and avoid a government shutdown. At the same time, it may be important to come to an agreement that's bipartisan and anchored in common sense to extend the pending expiration of the eight additional bills that are scheduled to lapse on March 8th so that good faith, tough negotiations can continue in the absence of a government shutdown. Second, we discuss the urgent national security priorities of the American people as captured in the bipartisan, comprehensive Senate passed legislation. This is an existential moment for the free world as it relates to being there for our democratic allies in Ukraine, in Israel, and in the Indo-Pacific, and also at the same period of time, making sure that we provide humanitarian assistance to Palestinian civilians who are in harm's way in Gaza or in other theaters of war through no fault of their own. Third, as Leader Schumer indicated, we had an open an honest and a candid, firm discussion about the border. We all agree that we have a broken immigration system and there is a need to address the challenges at the border in a thoughtful, bipartisan way. As Democrats, we support a safe, a strong, a secure, and a humane border. We just need our House Republican colleagues not to play politics and engage in political stunts relative to the border, but to sit down, as was done in the Senate, and enter into good faith discussions about fixing our broken immigration system. As Democrats, we stand ready to do just that. Senator Schumer, Senator Schumer, Senator Schumer, 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 what made this meeting one of the most intense you've ever had the here? The urgency of supporting Ukraine and the consequences to the people of America, to America's strength, if we don't do anything and don't do anything soon. I was so, so shaken by what I saw at the border. I was, I was strengthened by the, by the strength of Zelensky and the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian soldiers, but shaken that here they are fighting without arms against a brutal dictator who will just do anything to kill them. And the intensity in that room was surprising to me, but because of the passion of the president, the vice president, Leader, Leader uh, Jeffries, Speaker, uh, Leader McConnell, and myself, it was. And, you know, Johnson tried to answer, and he made it clear he wants to do something on the border, but we made it clear to him we can't tarry or the war could be lost. And second, we had to, we wanted to do border and have a tough, secure border plan, as we showed, we Democrats showed in the Senate, but he can't say it won't do Ukraine until we get border. He's tried to do border for six months and couldn't come up with a single Democratic vote. But is that Senator what Schumer, Senator, Schumer, Schumer, Senator, Schumer, Senator Schumer, Senator Schumer, Senator Schumer, Senator Schumer, yes, Senator Schumer yes, you yes. said you've discussed border here. Um, is this a part of the discussion? Is there a legislative discussion as part of this, or is this still the Republican position it, look, that it has to be done through the White House and executive orders? Let me make orders? it clear. We made the overwhelming sentiment in that meeting is we got to do Ukraine now. And there are other issues, including border, which we should address, but not now. And there was a discussion in the room that could you do border just by um, uh, administrative action? I think Biden won that argument because he said you can't do it, we all said, without personnel. And you need legislation for personnel. And even the Republicans in the budget asked for more money for personnel at the border. So it was clear, it was clear that we want to fix border, but it was also clear the speaker did not make, didn't give a reason why you had to do one before you did the other. You Senator, you. Pope Francis, sir, Congressman, Pope Francis on Sunday called for a, sir.
Thank you. Thank you all for staying. We had a, um, a, a couple of meetings there. It was uh, frank and honest. I think we need more frank and honest conversations on Capitol Hill. So I was happy to participate in this. We did uh, that as a group. And then I had a one-on-one uh, -on -one for a period of time with the president, just he and I in the Oval Office. Uh, let me say this. When I showed up today, my purpose was to express what I believe is the obvious truth. And that is that we must take care of America's needs first. When you talk about America's needs, you have to talk first about our open border. I've been, I believe, in uh, maybe 20 something states over the last several weeks, going around the country, uh, appearing at events with my colleagues, and we're hearing from the American people of all parties and all persuasions in all cities and all states who feel this acutely. They understand the catastrophe at the border is affecting everyone. And it is top of mind for all the American people for that reason. So I brought that issue up repeatedly today in that room and, and again one-on-one -on -one with the President. I think that's our responsibility uh, to bring that up. The other big priority for our country, of course, is the funding of our government. And we have been working in good faith around the clock every single day for months and, and weeks and over the last several days, quite literally around the clock, to get that job done. We're very optimistic. I, I hope that the other leaders came out here and told you the same. We believe that we can get to agreement on these issues and prevent a government shutdown. And that's our first uh, responsibility. Uh, you also heard, I'm sure, that there was um, discussion about the supplemental uh, spending package. And uh, I was very clear with the President and all those in the room that the House is actively uh, pursuing and uh, investigating all the various options on that. And we will address that in a timely manner. But again, the first priority of the country is our border and making sure it's secure. I, I believe the President can take executive authority right now today to change that. And I told him that again today in person, as, I, as I've said to him many times, publicly and privately over the last several weeks. It's time for action. It is a catastrophe, and it must stop. And we will get the government funded, and we'll keep working on that. So we'll have to stay in your mind on government.